Hey folks, it's been about two years since I set up the steampunk tank. I got a few things I want to fix on there and change around a little bit. Let's take a look and see how it's done. It's coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peg Tech. It's good to see you again. Thank you for coming back. I've got a lot of work to do, so I'm going to keep this part short and kind of narrate as I go. Uh, I've got a, quite a few things I want to do on the tank. Uh, before I go too much further, I want to let you know I will be at Aquashell in Chicago. So uh, that's coming up real soon, next month. It has been about two years. I actually I set up this tank for a contest and uh, there'll be a link to a video at the end of this video, if you'd like to see kind of the origins, uh, there's a whole playlist for it. And it's a wacky, goofy tank, I know. It's, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of impractical, but it has some advantages too. It makes it really interesting and mysterious, um, not seeing everything. There's sort of a thought experiment and just like, hey, what if I just provide like a couple of really interesting points of view on the inside? And uh, you kind of conquer the fact that that you can't see much in there by putting really curious fish in there. Rachel O'Leary actually suggested the peacock gudgeons that I put in there. And I'm hoping there's still one alive. There was, he was alive just like a week ago. They did really, really well. I actually lost, uh, lost some all this year, uh, assuming that one's dead too. But they were really interesting and curious little fish and a perfect for in there. But I kind of like to change it up. I've got a lot of different ideas swirling around in my head right now. Um, some tanks that I've always wanted to do but haven't. Like uh, I'm thinking right now it would be really neat to sort of change the theme up a little bit. Uh, throw some sand in the bottom of that and put in a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of uh, coolie loaches. <laughs> Just not, they're all because when they I mean they do hide a lot, but uh, when they all are are out and eating, and especially I think if I, if you got enough of them and you put them in there, they would be all over the place. It's actually not a huge tank inside. I think it's got a little bit better than usual filtering when the plants are really uh, in high gear, but unfortunately the filter does like settle into the tank a little bit, so it's not even really getting the full five gallons. I would say it's probably about four gallons, and then you take away the substrate, maybe a little bit less. So like any tank, the stuff that you put inside of it's going to cut into the uh, the amount of water that you can actually hold in there. This is the kind of thing that can be easily scaled up, especially if you've got uh, some skills. Holly's uncle that helped us with this, Uncle Pooh, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> this thing's been really, really amazing. And uh, I, I, I definitely, like, if I had done the woodworking and stuff, it would have been a, a, a much poorer quality. This is extremely sturdy. That brings it to another advantage it has, is that it's really well insulated, so uh, I think I could probably keep a beta in here without really even including a heater or putting a very small heater in, and it would be like maximum effectiveness. I mean, it becomes a jacuzzi inside of this thing. It's really, really well insulated inside of all that wood, so it holds its, uh, it holds its heat in. I'm a little scared that a uh, I bet if I got a shy one would just like stay in the back and I'd never see him. Or stay really close to the top, which kind of is problematic too. Because you actually can't see the top of the aquarium from most points of view. Um, you're basically looking through the middle and then into the bottom a bit. Especially if you're looking at it from above. My big beef with the Wabi Kusa ball so far is that the plant that's in there right now, which is like a, I believe that's a crypt, it's done too well. It's done to the, well to the point where it's, it's just basically choking everything out. It's a really huge plant, and I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm not sure if I pull it out from under that protective glass, because that glass never comes off, so it stays permanently humid in there. And I'm wondering uh, if I take it out from underneath that, you know, will it survive very long? Certainly I could probably train it, miss some water and train it. So I'm going to pull it out and put it aside and uh, think about keeping it, but I don't know. Sometimes I have a problem like plants. I, I want to keep them alive as long as I can, but sometimes it's like, especially one I've got a whole lot of. I mean, <laughs> I don't need any more crypts in my life. I got plenty. 
One thing I am going to try to steal from a couple of different tanks is uh, some moss. I'm going to try to get some moss. And uh, I've got some other plants. So I've got this idea with a wabikusa. And if you don't know what a wabikusa ball is, basically it's a... Uh, there's a lot of different definitions first. They all involve this sort of roundish piece of dirt. <laughs> you can make them yourself or you can buy them commercially. Uh, this person was another YouTuber. I, I say was because I haven't really kept up too much. It's been a, it's been a, a, maybe a year or so since I bought this. So I would planned on redoing this thing a long time ago, but I just never got around to it. So I've got two of these balls. And uh, you can make them yourself. And there are other people that sell them. When I did some research... Get you out of here. And that's, that's basically what it is. It just looks like an asteroid. Now this big huge thing, I'm going to need to soak it. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and get this in some water. So some stuff I saw, like from some ADA stuff that I've seen, but I've never seen in the U.S. anywhere, but some stuff they do over there is they'll actually take those balls and they'll put plants all over it and um, wrap them up, and they have, they'll be like little platforms to kind of start. So they'll take it and just put it in a crevice of a big rock someplace, and uh, then the plants will grow out of that, and they kind of have their little built-in you know, place to grow. And they'll do that fully submerged, you know, in the water, just kind of like, and, and it doesn't look like this at all. This looks like a, you know, baseball, I'd say, about the size of a baseball. A little bit bigger than a baseball, smaller than a softball. But theirs will be flat, like it's like it's a, it's more like a almost like a donut that's full in the middle, <laughs> and then they or a muffin. I guess the ones I saw they look like wafers. They more look like a slice of a round object with plants on top of it, but kind of the same texture. They look like they're made out of this porous dirt, which I think this is dirt and there's some other grit like sand. Um, and some other things. I'm not sure what it's wrapped in on the outside. It does basically turn into mud if you're if you let it get too wet. So um, what you want to do is you want it so to soak where you can kind of push into it some, but you don't want it to, to um, you don't want it to get too wet, or you can basically crush it. Uh, the ones I was working with, I, they got a little bit too worked over and ended up splitting a couple of them in half. And you can still use it, but it might not be as pretty or as practical as before. The other thing to note is that you can grow, they, there are different sizes. This is the largest of the ones that uh, purely aquatic sells. But there are all different sizes. And yes, you can make them yourselves. There are videos on that. There's DIY videos for that. Out on the internet, I watched it, it look dirty and not like fun, so I didn't, chose not to do that. <laughs> So another thing that you can do, besides like putting it in the water, is to keep it slightly out of the water, let it wick the water up through the dirt. So if any part of this is in the water, that water will just wick its way up. And uh, you, if you've got plants attached all around the outside of this, and especially if it's covered by something to keep it the moisture in, uh, you can grow all kinds of plants. The idea is to try to grow... I think, that, you know, just for some people, to grow plants that are normally underwater, above water. That's another way to go. And if you do that, you're going to have to really train the plants. There's a lot of spraying, keeping them as wet as possible and stuff for a long time until they start to grow their, their new leaves and things that are more adapted to the environment you've created. So to cheat, I thought, maybe I'll get some tissue culture plants. <laughs> These are basically raised uh, dry. They just have uh, some moisture at the bottom from this gelatin or whatever. And uh, they're fairly inexpensive sometimes. There's all kinds of places to get them, but um, I decided just to clean out PetSmart. I did go to my local store first, but um, they didn't have like exactly what I was looking for. It's kind of tricky in there. There's not a lot of space inside of this. And even some of these things are going to be uh, probably too big in a short amount of time if everything goes perfectly, right? But if it does really well, I might even be able to expand or put them in something else later later on down the line and just 
enjoy them as they are now. So what I've decided to do is make myself a, an Anubis garden inside of here. And I've got a couple of different kinds. I've got Anubis Nana, which I've used a lot. You know, I actually have a lot of this around the house. And uh, it looks it looks okay. You know, I, I don't love these little top fin pet smart things. I don't I don't love them, but uh, they do okay. They do okay. You can save the plants. <laughs> You just gotta be real picky, go through each one of them, and uh, you know, try to find one where it's not the gelatin hasn't all evaporated and it's not all dead in there. Even if it's got some dead leaves, but that you see some potential, you know, it'll do okay. One thing you want to do is like don't open it until you're absolutely ready to plant it. And you can put these underwater. Uh, you do need to notice that there'll be a little, there'll be a little uh, aquatic right here and some will say I don't have any like that but some will say like the peacock fern and stuff like that will say semi aquatic which means it will not survive underneath the water and even sometimes calling some of these aquatic is sort of a stretch because in real life they'd only be aquatic for a little ways and then they kind of change into their other form two of these are types of Anubis that I've, I've uh, <clears throat> Two of these are types of Anubius that I've never used before. And I've been calling I've been calling this Anubis again, haven't I? <laughs> Anubis is an Egyptian god, and Anubius is a plant. I also got some of this cardinal plant. Um, I have I don't know if this is going to do very well. <laughs> One thing I kind of want to do is I'm going to plant lower, like into the tray a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get this stuff to grow, kind of. From up underneath and uh, that'll be interesting right this is the steampunk tank as it stands today if you watch the original video it did end up replacing this light uh, the other light was really low rated I didn't actually check any of the reviews for it before I bought it and then I was like oh well well I'll use it as long as it lasts and it lasted maybe maybe a month or two and then I replaced it with this. This is like a little $20 Amazon desk lamp. And it works great. One of the things I'd always plan to do is actually attach a fixture to this. I need to think about that a little bit more. Is I, I just kind of made a little uh, area in the back where you could clip uh, a clip-on light and use this for now. Also, it's in the window now. So, I mean... In theory, I could just have this opened up a little bit more, maybe, and and just use the sun. But my fear of that is that the plants will all grow, you know, towards the window and away from, you know, the point of view. I really want them to grow straight up or, you know, uh, be kind of facing this way a little bit. So when you look at them, it's prettier. The plants in here um, are surviving. They're not doing super, super good. I think they're perking up a little bit since I brought it over here next to the window. Of course, just a very small amount of light creeps through the little porthole there. Uh, that's why it is safe to keep this at a window. Some things that I want to fix is uh, the, the finish on this. It, it just needs to be refreshed a little bit. This is plastic, so it won't matter, but I want to touch up some of the wood. This is warped, and I can't fix it. I do have a nice, like, plastic coating on the inside that's sort of protecting it a little bit, but... It gets a little warped. I need to clean this up too. Look at all that calcified. Yeah, that's the calcium from evaporating water. Calcium creep right up over that. It's no good for that wood either. So I want to clean all this up. I'm not sure if I want that many cables going in there. Putting a heater in there sometimes makes it really, really warm. It doesn't feel too warm right now. I do like the light effect. One thing I do want to do in here is uh, redo the aquascape a little bit. But I haven't decided what to use. The Wabi Kusa ball will be the main part of this project. Uh, uh, this plant has done really well. Actually, it's too well. And uh, it's uh, there's I think there's three Wabi Kusa balls in here, three large ones. I've got two more that I'd like to replace, and I want to take this big plant out. I'm not sure if the other stuff underneath that is dead. I mean, it gets really dark in there, and I can see, kind of see it through some of the leaves. 
there might be something in there. But I really wanted a smaller, uh, a smaller scape. So I've got an idea, and we're going to put that into motion. It really hasn't been much trouble at all. Uh, I'd really like to put some sparkling grommies in here, or maybe maybe a betta. I'm kind of sick of the dragonstone too, so I might I might pull that out anyway. It's been really good for hiding some of the equipment in the back, the sponges and stuff. And of course, I do have some rocks permanently affixed to the top as a, sort of a disguise. So when you're in this view down here, it looks like the ceiling of a cave somewhat. Now, of course, on the side, I've got my little tools here. And the squirter for this broke a long time ago. I'm not sure if I'm going to want it back, especially when I start redoing plants, but um, yeah, it just fell off the bottom of this cork and it broke. So I've been looking for another bottle just like it, but it's like, hasn't been super easy to find. It's also good for meditation. So what I might do, uh, I do, <laughs> I do have another fun thing I do in here, which is I can take a, I can take a small towel. And I fold it up, kind of like a nice napkin at a fancy restaurant, and put it in there, and it looks pretty nice. But I think I'd like to put that over here. So I might try to swap these two, put my tools up front, and the towel, uh, and maybe a mister if I ever find another bottle, um, for the future. Oh, there's the magazine. This is a piece that fell off the lid that kind of was helping me with evaporation. I made myself a little feeding hole and everything. I'm going to try to reattach that if I can. And this actually came with the, uh, with the glass part here. And I think it's super handy to use as like a tray when I'm working with this. I have tons of light on this thing right now. And you can barely see in there. Yeah, this uh, this canopy has handy little rosettes here, which make it nice for lifting this up. As you can see, I've got a tremendous amount of growth here <laughs> in this plant. See all this white stuff? I believe this is just evaporated uh, just evaporated water. I do have some kind of mushy looking little moss and hydrocotyl. I believe it's hydrocotyl. There might be a little bit of, uh, might be some other stuff in there, some Monte Carlo perhaps. I put a couple of different things on here. So there might be some stuff in here to say, but I need to get this plant out. It's just too big. It's dominating the whole thing. Putting everything in shade. I basically can't grow anything else here with that. Uh, a lot of it has migrated off. It's coming down through. Like the Wabikusa ball broke in half. And this has been growing up from between it and then into some of the substrate. I've got fluorite in the base of this, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. And uh, now it's just, it's basically a growing in just the swamp that is the underneath around these balls and stuff. Right, so I'm going to take this away and clean it. I need to get under there and unplug all these things. I've just, I just pulled the switch out, but I'm going to need to pull all the cords out of here just to get this off. It's a little too tight to run the cords like, you know, down the next to the glass anywhere. So I just have, have it coming out a little hidey hole over here on the back. Let's see how this goes. I'm just going to pull it up. Huh. Yeah, it looks like it's mostly rooted into the gravel and the rocks and this stuff. All around that ball. <laughs> it's like it got started inside the ball there and then as it worked its way out it just kind of integrated itself into everything else too.
Okay. Now I've got all the cords pulled out. I can take the lid off. Hey, the gudgeon is alive. Those cables aren't exactly pretty, but that's what the tank looks like with the sleeve pulled off. That's the bottom of the Wabi Kusa tray. There's a pump underneath there. Sends the water directly up a little pipe that comes into this tray. And then it ever flows back into the aquarium over here. It's a nice, gentle flow of water. I did decorate all the way back here because you could look in through the other side and I wanted it to seem like there was a deep dark cave. I have a little tube in here because I had peacock gudgeons and they love those little tubes. I do have the one peacock gudgeon left. I saw him swimming around, him or her. I can't remember which, which one it is in here. And I've got some shrimp in here too. The peacock is going to go to the tank downstairs, the Fluval Flex. And the shrimp will probably go in there too. I've got a lot of improvements I want to make, and I really don't want to rush this too much. So what I think I'm going to do is focus on the Wabi Kusa ball this week, get it back in place, and maybe leave the, the top of it off while I make some adjustments and really think about what I want to live in there. All right, so these guys have been soaking for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here, just to kind of keep them wet, keep the water wicking up through there. All right, so I've stolen some moss from some other aquariums, and that should be enough to get this started. All right, I'll set them all over here for a minute. When I go to attach, this is probably a bad idea. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead and acknowledge that now. But what this is, these are staples that are meant to uh, enclose a cable. So if you're running cables uh, for your television or something else in your home, you can use a staple gun to kind of manage the cables. What I'm going to do, I'm going to break a couple of these off. And I want to try to use them to anchor some of the uh, Anubias as I'm putting it in here. I'm not going to be obnoxious and use the staple gun, although that sounds fun. Because I think it would kind of get in the way, but I want to use these as, to kind of hold it in there. And I'm going to try to put it where I can pull it out later in case it gets... I don't know if these are going to rust. I'm not sure what staples are made of. If it's stainless steel, it might not be a big deal. But um, I guess we'll know quite soon. All right, so I tried... Uh... I tried wrapping these balls with string for about 10 seconds and then decided I hated doing that. So I'm going to just kind of work with them inside of this container. And what I'm really going for here is to make kind of a nice scene, something interesting to look into. It was interesting with the other plant too, you know, the big, huge plant, but the problem was it was just, it was too, uh, it was too domineering. It was basically, you couldn't see anything and the leaves were pressing all against the glass and really just kind of not creating much imagery there. Look at how well this little container fits. It'd be really easy to make one of these yourself using just these little cheap disposable Rubbermaid containers. It might not last a long time this way. A friend of mine made this one for me out of acrylic. I kind of drew a picture of what I wanted and they recreated it for me. And it fits on the lip of this little five gallon tank perfectly. And this is Anubis congenesis. Is that right? Well, if I butcher the name, at least you got to see it. I wish I could pull it out. I wonder if it I'll very gently pull. Oh, wow. It's 
really dry in there. This is probably a last minute save for these plants. It's going to end up being a plant rescue. Well, the good news is it's not going to be terribly shocked by uh, being a little dry in its leaves. And that's what I was hoping for. That's the only reason I went and just kind of grabbed some plants like that versus just, you know, really thoughtfully mail ordering them and <laughs> like thinking about what I wanted and doing it that way. And I'm going to just start right here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of all the cracks in these balls, these ball cracks. Oh, man. This video is going to be demonetized for sure. We got a second one. You know, the first one was like in pretty good shape. I dug quite a bit at PetSmart to find something. I decided I wanted to do this project and started making some moves towards doing it. Very gentle. Shake off that stuff. Again, almost bone dry in there. These things must go for a long time. Pretty little plant though. I like the leaves. This one's got a little damage. I don't know if I'll pull it though. It doesn't look terrible. All these leaves look pretty decent to me. Here we got some Anubius Nana. Oop. It pops right out. This one, uh, this one has a, a stem here where a leaf used to be. I'll just remove that. And the plant will be better for it. We've got a leaf that looks like it's starting to die a little bit. I'm going to go and just pull it off. It can save its energy on that one. All the rest of these, this one's a little questionable. Again, it's okay to trim this down a little bit. We'll let it grow back. Yeah. It's just got just a little bit. Let's take that off too. <clears throat> that might be overkill. I want a little height in there. So we're going to start this one. It's growing this way. And start it back here in the back. Oh, you know, I almost forgot. We got some of this cardinal plant that I wanted to try. Again, I think it's grown. Like, I don't know if it's grown straight in this bag or that's been portioned out and put in some gel. It very well could have just been born in this bag. Like they could have just started that thing and then hermetically sealed it and let it grow. I haven't seen where they grow these, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm getting here, but. This is a real viney plant. It's got the gel on the bottom. And I have no idea if this one will work or not. There's really a wide variety of plants you can do this way. I opted to just be surprised. These things are really tough, especially that's the old one there. So these new ones, still pretty tough, even though they've been soaking for a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm making a hole, and I'm going back in there and inserting a plant. I'll show you on this one here. So I'll make a hole. Best I can, try to go back to that hole. Feel your way in. I'll hold that plant down while I pull this out. If I can, get those roots in there. Pull a little too hard. All right, that came loose. In pretty good shape. All the leaves look good. I ripped one, pulling a little too hard. Which one was it? Was it you? Yeah, I ripped you up a little bit. So I'm going to pull the front off. That'll be okay. <clears throat> all right. Shook all the stuff off there. Braziri an Anubias. Anubias. Anubos. Let's see here. 
Oh, there's like two plants actually in there. Going gently. All right. See it, sisters? Hmm. Interesting leaves on this one. There's a different texture there. That's pretty cool. And uh, this one had two. Yeah, everything looks healthy for the most part. I think this is new growth. So and there it is, my little Anubius. And here it is, my little Anubius garden. There's some little cardinal plants in there. Uh, I do have it anchored partially with those staples and they move a bit, which is okay because there's about to be a container put on top of that. And I've tried to kind of make it sort of center heavy. I know it eventually it's going to make its way out to the edges here. And, uh, but I want to make it so it's, so it's mostly in the middle and hopefully it'll be a nice little thing to look at when the condensation isn't too heavy. All right. The lid back on real carefully here. Take a look. Looks nice. Yeah, see, that'll be a lot more interesting to look at than just the, the leaves all pressed against the glass. And perhaps this will get overgrown and uh, these things will get huge too. If they do, I'll pull them out or, or baby them off or something. I, I can always transition them to underwater plants too and use them in my aquarium later. That might be might be interesting to do as a, a new project once these things get overgrown. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug the pump back in and just kind of have this run for a while and um, maybe do a little water change. I'm going to do some work on the cabinet and uh, think about rescaping this and rehoming the little peacock gudgeon. I'm going to rehome that peacock gudgeon. I'll uh, give him a nice place to live over in the 32 gallon. And by the way, that's doing good. I'm going to do like a, uh, I think it's a two or three month update on it very soon also. So next week I'll be rescaping the inside, kind of fixing up some other things and uh, redoing some of the electronics. I'm going to change the light out that's in here if I can. I'm not sure. I've got another light to put in here that'll be a lot brighter, but um, I'm not sure if I want to use it or not. But folks, all that's coming up next week. Until then, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon with part two. Bye-bye. to see you again. I want you guys to know I've been really good and try to minimize my ball chips. And Rachel O'Leary suggestions for things that I... So if you don't know what a Wabi is, <laughs> okay. I thought, well, why not get some liquid uh, is to try to grow uh, plants that are normally submerged as emerge, emergent plants. Immersed, immersed, emerged. Well, let's see if I can get some stuff to kind of grow from underneath the balls and.